Well, yes, it's back, believe it or not, at least for a while. Um, might have an abbreviated session today, I don't know, depends on uh, if I can remember what I was doing with the submarine and whether anything more gets done. Uh, I thought I had this, uh, well, whatever, there's the camera. Um, looks like everything's working. That's kind of a cool thing, having been away for a while, you know. You turn things on and you never quite sure what's going to happen. Um, there were a lot of updates that have not been installed. So hopefully that won't make any difference in terms of what's going on here. Uh, but, you know, sometime, some day somebody might remember, I don't know, probably not me, but uh, to um, install the available updates and see if it makes any difference. Probably not. Usually updates just break everything. So, uh, yeah. Um, nobody's asked for a flip yet, so I've got my flipping things here. Maybe I'll just wait. I could just sit here and wait until someone comes on and asks for a flip. Or I could uh, go back to the submarine and try to remember where I left off and what yet needs to be done. Um... You probably, yeah, you might recognize this. This is uh, another one of those interminable things that looks pretty simple and straightforward and turns out to take forever. Uh, this is the missile deck. This is where the tubes that hold the uh, submarine launch ballistic missiles go. Yep, there's uh, 16 of them. And in this prototype, they carried Polaris missiles, which had one thermonuclear warheads so this submarine was only capable of obliterating 16 cities um, later models became much more sophisticated they carried um, Poseidon missiles which were uh, multiply uh, targeted re-entry vehicles and then later on tridents and I think there's another generation now anyway they're uh, they're not not much bigger because you know the size of the tubes are the size of the tubes and you can't really retrofit those once you're done but you know you can improve the the flight characteristics and the propulsion and the targeting and everything anyway um you know the submarines now can obliterate many many more cities so that's really that's really good to know but this one could only do 16 this is the very very first submarine launch ballistic missile submarine um, so the thing I'm building here and have been building and I'll continue to build for probably ever is uh, a Renwall cutaway model. Okay, the, uh, It shows the interior of the sub and you'll see that a little bit later when I actually do some painting of the inside of the hull Okay, in preparation for some of the other stuff that's going on. Uh, but uh, right now, I am continuing to work on trying to get all the parts for this part of the submarine to fit together. And that's been just a little bit of a challenge. Okay. So, if you remember, I kind of remember. Um, I kind of remember where I left off before going off on a vacation, which was wonderful. It was a ter ter terrific trip. It was an amazing trip. Um, and maybe I can tell you a little bit about it later. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, I was working on this missile tubes. And what I found was that after having prepared, which is to say filed down and sanded the seams so that the seams don't show, that um, they're supposed to be able to fit through, you know, real easy like this one does. This goes through real easily so it doesn't scrape off the paint later that some of the ones that I had uh, did not fit okay they wouldn't go through just didn't <clears throat> and what did I have I need to count these two four six eight ten twelve twelve out of fifteen uh, fit and then I've got um, I picked three more and for some reason there's four I don't know why <clears throat> but these were these were ones that were glued together earlier and so the seams are showing and there's gaps and all sorts of you know stuff 
that's not good about them so I need to prepare these but at least at least these will fit through the holes okay and that's good but I needed to pick uh, three of them and I've got four and I don't know why there's four you know something something got screwed up this one looks this one looks like it might be okay Pick, pick the one of these two that looks probably this one. And then there's the special one. This one has a little spring-loaded thing in it. Okay, lever. There's a spring in here. And um, it pops up and there's a little plastic missile that goes down into the tube. And it's supposed to pop it up. This one needs a fair amount of filing and sanding as well. Because um, it just uh, it just does in order to look good. So part of what I'm going to be doing today then is repeating what I did with these, which is filing down the seams so that the seams don't show quite as badly. Um, the missile tubes on the submarine did not have uh, seams like this, and so. Before I paint them, I want them to not show quite as much. <clears throat> so I'm going to do that with these four. And then uh, test fit all of them again to see whether any additional modification needs to be done before they can go through these holes. So the assembly of this, I test assembled it last time, which was like, what, three weeks ago or something. Um, went okay. You know, it, it went okay. It showed me that at least theoretically, it was possible to um, assemble this thing, okay, which was pretty encouraging because I wasn't really sure that that was going to happen. And then, um, yeah. So what I'm the, the plan for today, at least, is to um, get these filed and sanded so that they are like this. Test fit all 16 of them to make sure that they are going to work. That includes the special one that goes here. Okay, that needs to fit in this spot. Okay. Um, I might need to remount these holes a little bit. You know, to make sure that there's nothing kind of plugging them up or anything like paint, excess paint and little bits of plastic or whatever. Um, and then I'm going to paint the inside of the hull. I started that last time. Uh, got most of it done with this light blue color. Managed to stick my finger in it. Made a mess. I need to see if it needs a second coat or not. We'll take a look at that later. Um, the top part here above the top deck, which is this one. Okay, once this is put together, this deck goes here. All right. Um, once that's in place, the hull above that needs to be painted uh, this dark gray color. So part of what I'll be doing too is identifying where that line is and then painting that dark gray. And then there might have to be a little bit of iteration back and forth, you know, in case I get the dark gray down too low. Usually what I do is it doesn't come down quite far enough. Um, but that won't be too terribly bad. I'll be able to uh, touch that up later. Okay. So I'll probably be doing a little bit of assembly actually today. Um, in that this bulkhead here should go into the submarine. Actually, that was, uh, if we look way back at the instructions here, on step five wherever it's step five went. Yeah, way back here when this deck was put together, when I assembled that, this was actually supposed to be installed then. I didn't because sometimes parts don't fit, but I'm going to stick this into the hull <coughs> um, after I get um, the hull painted. Uh, yeah, so, but before all of this is going to go together, there's some really challenging bits yet. 
One challenging bit is to paint all these torpedo tubes yellow, so they need to be primed. In order to do that, I have to build a little uh, stand, essentially. It's a 2x4, and I'm going to drill 16 holes into it, put 16 little dowels in so I can set up 16 little missile tubes so that I can prime them and spray paint them um, because they have to be done standing up. Well, you can see why, because if you lay them down, then the paint will go. Anyway, there's that. And then the most challenging part, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, is that these are the top hatches, the top hatches of the um, submarine missile tubes, of the, the missile tubes. They go in like this, okay? And that's supposed to be the hatch. There's two hatches, one's on the inside of the hull, the other one's on the very outside of the hull. Um, those are supposed to be painted yellow. And I'm not sure if that's going to be possible or not, but there's a, there's a thing I'm going to try uh, using some parts from one of the donor submarine kits. Since, as I've said before, I've got three of these. Three kits. Needed three kits to make one kit because these are 1960s authentic vintage kits. So, you know, parts are broken, parts are missing, parts are painted, parts are glued. So you get three kits and you get enough pieces to make one. So, uh, yeah, but I'll show you about my sort of uh, plan to do that. And if the plan works, if the test works, then I'll be really pleasantly surprised. And um, I'll do that. If it doesn't work, if it comes to that, if worse comes to worse, these will just not get painted yellow. Okay. Um, look at that. This is the primer color, which is a pretty good color. And it, um, it didn't cover here. So when I do the priming on these missile tubes, I might have to reprime this. But I'll be priming the missile tubes, but I'll also be priming some other pieces because the very, very next section is kind of a fun section. It's the reactor deck. And there are just like one, two, three, four, five, just a couple of pieces that go with that. And depending on how today goes, um, um, I might, I might just go ahead and pull these pieces out and start prepping them. This is supposed to be a cutaway view of the reactor. So this whole reactor thing gets painted, you know, I don't know, like steely gray or something. But the inside is supposed to show the glowing white heat of the uh, reactor core. And then this section here is supposed to represent the coils in which the superheated uh, water circulates here and transfers its heat to the next level down superheated water that goes through this pipe. It's one pipe here at the top of the reactor. Back to the mechanical rooms, which are aft. There's four decks in two compartments. Um, yeah, that, um, it's just weird. The, the entire submarine runs off of whatever comes through this one pipe. Pretty cool, I guess. But for now, um, I'm going to do some filing of, uh, doing some filing of uh, the seams on these replacement missile tubes, which I had to... Uh, pull from the other models because the ones that I had selected <coughs> uh, didn't fit through the holes. Basically what happens is that um, because these are three different kits they were molded slightly differently. And that uh, resulted in parts from one not fitting in the other, even though for the most part they look identical. But the diameter of the missile tubes was just slightly different. And that was unexpected. Fortunately, there were only three of them.
you can see as I'm filing this, you can see where the the ridge is because um, yeah, until that takes a uniform, slightly lighter gray color all the way across. It's not even all the way across. So the upside of doing this is that uh, the seams don't show. It, well, they will a little bit probably, but not as much as if I didn't file and sand them. The downside is that it flat spots things a little bit. Well, yeah, I was gone look, almost like three weeks, it felt. I think it turned out to be. It was a long time. Um, so I hope people didn't forget about relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons. I did promise I would be back, and so I am. See if anybody else remembers. Am I going to have to rebuild an audience from scratch? I don't know. I mean, an audience of what? However many watch this. I don't know. I don't pay attention to uh, that part of it. I'm, my job is is an unpaid uh, volunteer here, kind of to just do relaxing painting on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays when I'm around anyway, from more or less 10 until more or less 2. And so I started pretty close to 10 today, which is pretty good after being gone for a while. Um, yeah, it wasn't bad. Everything worked, at least as far as I can tell. Um, from this side, everything seems to be working. Looks like the music is playing. Looks like the audio is audioating. Yeah. It got really cold. And um, as a result, the air is really dry. And as a result, my old sinuses are uh, trying to make up for the dry air by excreting mucus. Yep. Yeah, uh, so I apologize for that. Yeah, it's a runny nose. Every once in a while, I'm going to have to grab a tissue or some sort of paper thing here. And excretion. <clears throat> well, this is coming along. As I, you know, I've done like 15 of these, a bunch of these before, so it's not terribly challenging. The main idea is just to get the seams reduced as much as possible. Use the file for that because it goes more quickly. And then I get some super fine, like 1200 grit emery cloth and then polish it a little bit so that um, <clears throat> so that, you know, even though the seam doesn't show, we don't need to have a big textural we don't need to have uh, file marks showing, you know, through the paint. <coughs> yeah, I shouldn't be doing this here. This is creating all sorts of little plastic bits. I remembered that from last time. This creates plastic dust, and the plastic dust gets on the other pieces, and then uh, that could get in the I can just make it harder because then it has to be cleaned off before assembly and sometimes painting or paint touch up. And the um, yeah, 
别人。So these need to fit in three different decks. They need to be, they need to go through one deck. Okay, they need to sit on the base deck, more or less even and flat. And then they need to nestle on the top, and the top deck is the least concerning of them.、Um, because it doesn't, you can't really see it that much. And the way these things are molded and filed, they almost all certainly fit. So, one of the tedious things you'll have to watch me do here is、um, I have to take all. Of these, including the special one with the spring in it, and、uh, test hit them again to make sure that they slide through the openings in the mid deck without too much friction, because the friction would rub the paint off later when it happens after they're painted, and also that they sit. Let me just show you one. See, this has a little. Gap on it that's supposed to fit into a little tab. Needs to make sure that they fit into that hole in the deck.、Um, you know. Yeah, that they、uh, they're more or less flat, like that one did. <coughs> Thing I discovered when I'm piling it down on the top is that it it's, it flares a little bit right at the top. For some reason, the mold does that. I mean, when they molded it, so that there's this little flare right at the top that、um, it is a problem because that's the first thing that the first part that has to go through the. These openings. See that? See, it's sort of sticking. No, this one doesn't fit very well at all. Why did I pick it? How does this one go? This one's fine. This one I rejected. Does that one work? Yeah, that one works too. I'm anyway. This one. And put aside because it just doesn't. It was just too tight. This one's okay. <clears throat> This one is a little. One of the reasons I was going through all the different decks、um, is because the, when these were molded, they have dimples. You can kind of see it there a little bit because the molding process didn't go very well. So what I have to do is make sure that when this is Inserted, you know, assembled that the the dimple is toward the back. Well, what I'm hoping. Then anyway, is that after I'm done with these, cleaning them up, that I will have 15 plus one, 15 regular tubes plus the spring-loaded tube, fitting through those holes in the mid deck, and setting nicely. You know, setting nicely on the bottom deck. And if I can get that to be the case, then I will move along to、um, some other bits of submarine assembly and painting. And then these will be ready, finally after forever,、uh, to be primed and painted.
do I expect, even though it's pretty boring to watch, that as I am testing the fit of these things, that some of them will just will need some some additional sanding and filing. Okay. And I'll just do that. Because uh yeah, that's what this is about. It says pretty high ridge on it. I don't know if you can see that very well. I could probably bring the camera down a little bit so you can watch this boring little sanding and filing thing. Um, the way the the reason there's an issue with the seams is that the, the two halves don't always line up perfectly. Okay, so that one side of it, like you can catch it with your fingernail here. This side is higher than that side, okay? And that's what causes the, the ridge that makes the seam so obvious. So as I file it down, what I do is I catch the top of the high one. <coughs> and then I file it down so that it matches the other one, the lower one. And because the filing changes the color of the plastic because it doesn't have a nice shiny surface it has kind of a rough surface you can see there's uh light dark and light and that dark part <coughs> there represents the difference in heights so i just fire this down until that darker line disappears and then that means that these two sides are now even. Fingernail across it, I can still feel a little something there, but a lot of that is because now, you know, these aren't quite round again. They got de-rounded. Flat spotted, basically. But the flat spots will be less obvious than, um, than the ridge of the seam would be. particular one it was not lined up very well at all I mean the ridge isn't huge it's like a 64th of an inch or something maybe uh, but it's this is one of the, the higher ones mm -hmm. doing this well you know I've just been I've been trying to make this model look do it I'm not a master modeler never have been um, you know there's different techniques that I'm sure people have that are way more sophisticated and effective than what I'm doing but I want uh, I want it to look decent okay because you know reliving my childhood here I actually built the original of this well, not the original one I actually built one when it came out in the 1960s and I know I did not spend time doing things like sanding down the seams on the missile tubes you know and I did not paint nearly as much detail as I did here you know like detail like this like the little tool tool thing okay 
with the players and the saws and things, and I keep forgetting about the ladder. There's a ladder there that needs to be... You know, the fine tipped felt, fine felt, fine pointed felt tip pen, and make the ladder um, black. And I've looked at that like seven times now, and every time I say, I need to do that, and then I am doing something else. But it will need to be done before that's installed into the hull. because that was like a whole week ago now. But I hope that those of you who are in the States and celebrate Thanksgiving had a really good holiday. That you all got together and, um, you know, had a good time with family and friends and whoever else you spent it with. <clears throat> I hope your football team won. I know that could only be true of half of you who cared about football. Well, no, that might not be true. <clears throat> I mean, it might just be that um, way more or way fewer than half. It's not random, is it? That way more or way fewer than half might have been happy with the outcome of the, you know, the inevitable Thanksgiving football games. I was surprised by one outcome. The, uh, the, the Packers actually beat the Lions. And, the, you know, it used to always be that the Packers were a better team than the Lions. That's not so much anymore because of, you know, the, the turnover of the players on the Packers team. Uh, the Lions have a really good team this year. They have one of the better records, which is kind of kind of surprising anyway it uh, it almost always turns out that the underdog of that game is the winner there was there was one year when I was growing up you know the Packers went into it into the Thanksgiving weekend game against the Lions which was kind of a traditional thing going back on time uh, as an undefeated team and the Lions were uh, not good but they won. It was a huge disappointment. Everybody was very upset. Had to drink a lot more brandy and everything uh, to get over that. But that seems to happen with some frequency on the, the Thanksgiving weekend game. If the Lions and the Packers resume their rivalry, then the, the underdog has, is the fre frequently the winner. Maybe it's maybe it's just part of the tradition that the, that the teams just have to play into. I know there's a, you know there's a lot of football watching over that over the weekend, but I was traveling and didn't see any of it, so can't comment on it other than to say that uh, 
You know, some of you are real happy with the outcome and some aren't, I guess. But hopefully, you know, hopefully it went okay for you. And if, if you won, that you didn't gloat too much. And if you lost, you didn't get too upset. Not that you were winning or losing, because you personally had absolutely nothing to do with uh, the play of the game. But, you know, other than your identification with the team, Oh yeah, and then there's all the shopping, wasn't there? You missed that too. You missed, you know, Black Friday, Black Saturday, Black Sunday, Cyber Monday. Um, what to do about the bales and stuff. You know? Some of you probably, those in the States, and I kind of come to understand that Black Friday phenomenon is now practically is, has spread out like they're doing it in Europe too why not I mean it's just it has nothing to do with Thanksgiving there because it's kind of a US thing but you know it's an excuse to get people to do some shopping and it is so that it works there too why not Anyway, yep, having been, having traveled over that period of time, uh, just get to participate in that. Got a lot of emails, though. You know, a lot of emails and things just saying, you know, click here for all sorts of deals. You know, the timing of the deal disappeared, so it wasn't kind of clicking, right? Let's come here. Okay. A little bit of shaping. Was to fit over the tab in the base, the base deck, to somehow keep it aligned. I found though that pretty much all it does is it just makes it harder to assemble. But you know, it's uh, one of the features of the kit. Okay. There's a three. Now I've got the one with the spring in it. <laughs> Tempted to do is tempt fate here. The, um, there's these little plastic missile shaped things pieces that come with the kit is I should actually I should pull one out and stick it in the tube and uh, demonstrate how it really is pretty lame in, in terms of the little spring in here launching the missile Maybe I'll do that later if I remember. Is uh, yeah, it's just to show how it doesn't really go anywhere. There are weird things about this kit. There are some things that are just amazing, you know. Like there's some clocks that are molded into the bulkheads, you know, and the hands and the numbers and things are included in the molding. It's really super detailed. There are other things 
that just just don't work. Parts that don't fit together. Like the whole periscope thing was misaligned so that they weren't vertical but diagonal and I had to modify the whole thing to get them to work. And I, I thought that that was just sort of like maybe peculiar to the kit that I was working on. But then I saw a picture of one that was assembled and their periscopes were all angled. You know, it was like, but I don't remember that when I built the, when I built one as, as a kid, I don't remember that things were that badly misaligned. But yeah, there's just some real serious um, quality control issues with the pretty much with the, the molding of this. There's been been parts that you could just tell that the that the mold itself um, didn't not enough plastic went into it. Or that there wasn't enough pressure behind the plastic. Some of the control panels in the control room were like there. Two out of three were really, really badly done. They had like divots in them. You know, I was starting to despair. I was like, oh God, what am I going to have to do? I have to like reconstruct these things practically. But then I got the third one out and it was. It was like a great relief because it was uh, it was okay, yeah. But two out of three were just horribly failures, horrible failures at molding. I hope this isn't ter terribly boring, I mean, horribly boring, intolerably boring, but I can't really get any much further until I clean these up um, and test fit them all. <clears throat> and, then, and then if things work, okay, if they actually work, if they fit, and if I can get the painting done, and the painting works, and if all of that comes together, um, this will go. This this will move. I mean, then I'll be able to assemble this and then move along. <laughs> the bottom of this actually shows through a little bit. So I'm just dialing that down too. There'll be some interesting um, interesting things that need to be done in terms of painting this. I have to stop playing with that. I mean, there's a tiny little tab of plastic that uh, is kind of fragile and it's just it's just waiting to be broken. <laughs> I'm done filing, which is going to happen fairly soon because I'm on the last seam of the last tube. Um, I'm going to polish them a little bit with the emery cloth just to get rid of some of the, the rough surface texture that's happening because of the file. And I'm using a file because I don't, it 
just get impatient, right? I mean, just how long can you sit around worrying at this plastic? So this cuts into it pretty quickly, but it does leave a rough surface <clears throat> that doesn't disappear completely under the paint. I will then polish these just somewhat. Probably a lot less than I should, but at this point, everybody starts getting impatient, including me. <clears throat> it's like, how long do I need to go rub at this to, to polish it before <clears throat> I get really, really tired of it? And everybody else does too. Hmm. And then I'll do the test fitting. And after the test fitting, uh, then begin to uh, work on um, some hall painting, probably. Or maybe, or maybe uh, ladder detailing. So this is the stuff. Give a polishing along the seam. And you can see that that you know it does a pretty good job. You can begin to see that uh, the you know the the color variation disappears a little bit and like I said I'm not going to hugely overdo it but this does make it look better Well, there's nobody in chat. I'm guessing that what happened, well, probably what happened is that people either didn't believe that I would be back, or they didn't know when, or maybe they've just abandoned Dyson Dungeons altogether. I hope that's not the case. But anyway, uh, the stream will pop up on YouTube, and that hopefully will be a reminder to people that Relaxing Painting with Dyson Dungeons has returned. And I plan to um, <clears throat> go back to the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, more or less 10 until more or less 2 schedule now. Probably with exceptions only for the holidays. There will be some exceptions, of course, for the Christmas holiday, uh, and the New Year's holiday, and the Hanukkah holidays, and you, anyway. I'm not sure what the holiday schedule will be, but if there's big family events going on, you know, to which I should attend, um, as opposed to, you know, painting a mini um, or working on the submarine, I mean, other than that, 
and then there will be several of those over the next over in December that's that's when these things happen um, I mean other than that I'm planning on Mondays Wednesdays and Fridays more or less 10 until more or less 2 I don't know how long I'll go today I'm gonna go until I run out of things to do um, or 2 o'clock whichever happens first I've got there's actually a fair number of things a variety of things I can work on today and uh, we'll do that and we'll work on those things <coughs> Part of those things will be finding things to be primed, like these tubes are going to get ready for priming. Hopefully after they are, uh, you know, sanded and polished and fitted, hopefully I'll be able to prime those. And then um, I've got a bunch of testing to do. I have to test to see if the yellow spray paint works. I find that yellow paints, whites, yellows, and reds sometimes are really kind of finicky in terms of coverage. And yellows sometimes are the worst, and these are supposed to be glossy yellow. So I will be practicing use of the glossy yellow on material other than these tubes before I do use it on the tubes. Because the last thing I want to do just to have to scrape off two layers of paint and start all over with these things. Well, that's not the last thing I want to do. It's not something I want to do. I shouldn't say it's the last thing I want to do. There are other things I would prefer not to do even more than not doing that. <clears throat> and it's definitely not the last thing because uh, there's like two full compartments of submarine that is yet to uh, yet to even come out of the box much less uh, being painted in the sun so those aren't even the last things because then there's stuff that needs to be done on the nose of the submarine in the back and then I have to figure out if I want to paint the hull the whole hull or not there's a little detail stuff I and mean, there's just a lot of little things on this submarine that could take forever like how much time am I spending is like an hour I spent an hour just playing around you know sand filing and sanding for missile tubes really yeah I guess that's what makes it relaxing the relaxed pace of accomplishment on this thing It did go a lot faster when I was like in seventh grade and I just stuck these pieces together. You know, if the pieces didn't quite fit, the model cement, you know, basically dissolves the plastic. And so it's really easy. You just dissolve the plastic and shove it around until it fits. <clears throat> and there's bubbles and fingerprints and all sorts of interesting uh, little Mars and characteristics on it. But who cares who cares it got done unlike now where i'm carrying and it's not getting done i guess that's a trade-off isn't it <clears throat> it's messing around with the detail or actually getting something done a, that seems to be the trade-off here and i've been moving very much in the direction of uh, not getting things done This one in particular needs a lot of polishing. They seem to have gotten a good deal of <clears throat> file marks on this.
the painting this one is going to be a little challenging also because of the, the lever and the opening. <clears throat> and I want to spray paint it, you know, so it gets a nice uniform coat, right? But I don't want to get the paint on the, the interior on the spring and the lever because that will just bind it all up, <clears throat> which misses the point of having it. I'm going to have to be spending a good deal of time filling that in. I don't know, with something. Little pieces of cloth or something. Um, and uh, <clears throat> masking it carefully so that paint doesn't get into it. I can't really rush paint it. Because especially with yellow paint, that's just it's just not going to coat it. It'll leave marks all over the place. It'll be a real mess. So, I'll probably end up spending an absurd amount of time, a ridiculous amount of time, doing nothing more <clears throat> than covering this up. <clears throat> this, little, this area here, including the... Uh, the little lever thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking I'm looking forward to that particularly really. <clears throat> Actually the the orientation of this in the submarine I'll show it to you when I do the test fitting. <clears throat> it causes a it, this this thing causes a problem of its own in terms of assembly and, and aesthetics of the assembly. Okay, I'm going to say I'm done with these. I'm going to just put them under here. <clears throat> now, take a piece of paper towel and try to get rid of the plastic dust everywhere here. All right, so we've got two decks, and each of these tubes has to fit into both decks. Um, yeah. If we need to slide through here. That's working. This one's working pretty well. Okay. <clears throat> then it needs to fit into these holes on the bottom deck and I'm trying it in, a, in more than one place because you know I'm not at some point I'll be picking which one goes where based upon you know just how, whether the seams show or not <clears throat> so there's one Maybe I'll do these three since they're here little slot thing here that's supposed to fit over the tab <clears throat> on, the, on the bottom here yeah that seems to work okay and it needs to go through the uh these are working better than they did when I tried them earlier, the thing is, you need to get them right straight through. This one, for some reason, this is a little tight here. Um, again, it's just making sure it goes directly through up there. <coughs> I know this is pretty tedious, but if um, if they don't fit now, they're not going to fit later, and that will be that will be a challenge then. I'm 
after painting, there's still going to be an issue because the paint will increase the diameter of the uh, the tube. So, for example, if a tube is really snug going in, okay, if there's an issue with that, after it's painted, it'll be even worse. <clears throat> I'm going to need a little bit of manipulating, I think. Yeah, those are slightly lighter color, and the, the diameter is just a little bit different. I'm going to play with those a little here. <coughs> See if that's a persistent issue. Yeah, this one's a little flared on the top, so sometimes I'm kind of anticipating that what I thought I would do is I just get this and do that. Just rotate the top of it. Oh, Brogger, hi! Thanks for joining in. I wasn't sure if anybody would, you know would do that today but uh, yeah having been gone for what was it like two weeks feels like a long time uh, finally back and of course it's submarine Wednesday so yeah um, I'm gonna move the camera so I'm working on these missile tubes trying to get the 16 of them to fit through these decks before I left on the trip you know on my travels I was able to test fit these pieces enough to convince myself that it's actually going to be possible to assemble this deck. Okay, this one, now it's fitting, so that'll be okay. But, uh, yeah, I ended, ended before my trip, um, no, noting that it's at least theoretically possible <clears throat> but also finding that um, three of the tubes that were borrowed from a different kit didn't fit through the holes in the deck of this kit. And there's a couple here that are going to be a little bit of a problem, so um, it's just making sure. Yeah, it's weird, like right at the top of this very very top of the two <clears throat> just binding a little bit yeah that's right you've got a full-time job now is that really been that must really be taking up a lot of your time it's about the only time you've got <laughs> is getting your own twitch yeah you probably have barely time to eat or sleep now. You get two, two, two jobs. I fortunately have only one job. Um, it's this. It doesn't pay very well, okay, like at all. But um, <clears throat> but it is you know it takes up a fair amount of time if I do it three days a week. So, but it's kind of nice to be back to this because I've been looking forward to making progress on the submarine. And uh, probably I should be able to get these things to work. Well, this, for some reason, this, you know, once it goes in, it's okay. But right here at the top, I might even have to use a, I hate to do this, I'm going to have to do it lightly, use a coarser sandpaper and then do some polishing. Oh, yeah, the two kids, too. How, how old are your kids? Are they old enough to, like, like be fun and helpful? Oh, 12 or 15, okay. So they're old enough to uh, not, okay, maybe not hang out with you quite as much, especially your daughter. 
Do they do they help out with your? Uh... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, teenagers. What can you do, right? Um, yeah, they go from. Um, Dad, hold my hand. Let's go to Disney. You know that kind of thing. Being being just hanging out and being real cuddly, even and everything. To uh, who are you and why are you still in my life? But I'm sure that they're great kids. Do they do they ever like help out with your stream? Are they interested in it at all? Because that would be cool, you know, if you were doing something that they that they enjoyed as well or participated in a little bit. Get all sorts of. Uh, let's just say this needs a lot of polishing now. Yeah, that's serious. You, you know, there's a, a huge upside to having kids who have a lot have, have talent like that because it's amazing, right? But then the downside is it's really demanding. <laughs> so like daily training. Um, Yeah, so the, is there, you know, travel soccer, that's, that can be in, interesting, but uh, is it, do you have an ice rink nearby anyway, where she can uh, train and practice, or is that a distance as well? <clears throat> okay, well, it looked like it scarred it up a little bit, um, but at least it fits better now. And fitting better is important. And that's quite a demand on the time, so then you're commuting an, an extra hour every day for the ice practice. So is she is she looking to become competitive? <clears throat> I mean, like, um, I'm not familiar with figure skating and what the options are. Like whether they're, I mean, you know, I watch it like at Olympics and the World Games and stuff, but I'm not familiar with what it's like when someone's learning. They have, <clears throat> do you have like meets that you go to? Competitions, uh, exhibitions, that kind of thing? Our kids are growing up. They got got involved in some stuff as well, but um, neither of them turned out to be very athletic. Why? That's. 
morning, then you get off. Holy cow. Is that, are they all in one place or do you have to keep like going back and forth or just travel to the ice rink on, uh, in the morning and then spend the day? Just, just binding a little bit too much here. Oh, no kidding. So then you have to make a choice. Do you, do you ever get into that? We have to, one of you has to choose which one you go with. Yeah, especially a soccer match of any distance away, too, I would imagine. Yeah, and for a working person, your Sunday is usually the day when you... Don't do things like that. Yeah, your life is your life is much more complicated than mine. We hope the kids appreciate it. No kidding. Oh yeah, did you did you um so you sharpen her skates for her? Congratulations. You now have a you now have another saleable skill. Uh-huh. So do you do you have your own sharpening wheel? Is that what it is? It's like a grinding wheel? I know next to nothing about skating, um, I have to admit. My brother, growing up, loved ice skating. I, growing up, fell down a lot. Well, that makes you popular. That's pretty neat. So, yeah. It's really good of you to do that for the team. Okay, well, that fixed that. So I'm glad I'm doing all this pre-checking because as I'm finding out here, um, you know, some of them just need modification before they will fit. And so that's what I'm doing. These two will be in the video. We'll see how the rest of these go. This is another one of these light colored plastic. Well, this, uh, this one might, might be another one of those. That's, no? Huh. Weird. So the other ones that are this color don't fit at all, really. They're very tight, but this one. This one, no. Uh, yeah, if it goes in straight, it's just if you start it at the slightest angle. to 29 oh my god you must you must be spending hours sharpening skates well i admire that i admire you taking that on <clears throat> i had no idea it was that big I, I when you were saying that i imagined that you know maybe seven to eight pair of skates or something that you'd be be sharpening but wow that's that's quite a thing
everybody's anxious and waiting for you to get to their skates and and you have to get it right otherwise um, I'm sure you'd hear about it if you for some reason failed failed to get a perfect sharpening Well, I'm just getting exhausted just imagining what your life is like. So I have to say, I am triply appreciative of the fact that you're willing to spend any time at all with uh, with relaxing painting. That's really that's really amazing and kind of you to do that. Thank you. Maybe you maybe it's relaxing. You never know. It might live up to its name. Watching me more or less be on camera, kind of manipulating little plastic parts to see if I can get them to fit. And for some reason, this one is being uncooperative as all get out in terms of setting on the base, which is the easy part. That's really, okay, it's really nice so that the time you know, the time is not just a, it's not a waste of time. It's just actually a really good use of time. Hopefully the restaurants are good. That's right. And there's time for a movie in between, between that and the, the next training. I mean, it's a full day, isn't it? it? Uses up the entire day, but it sounds like it's a really good time. And besides that, you become an essential part of the team because Everybody needs to have their skates sharpened. So just out of curiosity, um, how often do skates need to be sharpened? I, I have no clue anything about ice skating. I never, I did it like twice and um, it, it didn't go well. I did, did not enjoy it. <clears throat> and so gave up on it. Okay, so you drive over to the morning training and then you go back in the afternoon. That's nice too. I mean, it's a lot of time in the car. I don't know what your winters are like that, are there. Um, I know the Gulf Stream keeps a lot of Europe pretty moderate compared to the weather here at the same latitude um, you end up having to like to drive in the snow a lot or is it fairly fairly clear driving for most of the time okay, that one fits. yeah so they're really full days and you but it sounds like they're good days Thirteen. Okay. I'm going to work on this one. Oh, yeah. Her life is almost as busy as yours, then. on Sundays her busy life is your busy life for the same busy life and of course there's homework but that's a good time to do it probably is um, on Sundays you know sometimes you say well get your homework done right away on Friday when you get home so you don't have to worry about it but when you've got time like that on Sunday.
Oh, yeah, minus one, uh, that's not, it's like 26 degrees Fahrenheit or something, uh, oh, 27 maybe. Actually, it's it's been colder than that here. Um, we have, after I got back in here in Michigan, um, it's been around 20 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, way below zero uh, Celsius. We have not been above zero Celsius. We've not been above 32 Fahrenheit now for like three days. We ended up getting um, a bunch of snow, about two inches. Oh, no, minus one centigrade is just below freezing. So it's um, like in high 20s. But yeah, that's that's not unusually cold for us here, though. Um, at least this time of the year. We can get... Oh, I don't know what it would what's in centigrade, but... It's not unusual for us to get down to, well, hi, things are going okay. But it's not unusual for us to get uh, below zero Fahrenheit, which is like minus four or five or six or something centigrade. I'm not, I, I can't do the conversion in my head. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, that's, we, we tend to get colder weather here. Uh, than you do in Europe, here in the middle of the country anyway, we don't have a moderating current. This is the, uh, the special tube that has the spring in it and it has to fit into this hole and it doesn't really, it's a very tight fit. So I reamed out the hole a little bit. Uh, I'm also just filing down the, the base of this so that it might fit a little better. I, want, I don't want it to be real loose, I want it to be kind of tight, but I also want it to go in and uh, and set, you know, not just rest on top. Well, that's nice. Um, you have a drawing of the character enforcer. That's really cool. It's very nice of your friend to do that. We, um, here in, in this part of Michigan, we usually, s sometime between the end of November and mid-December, we usually get our first snowfalls. We have a white Christmas um, almost every year. Some. Some years, it's been kind of weird. <laughs> we didn't get any snow until Christmas Eve, and then it snowed on Christmas Eve, which is really fun. But most years, we do have we have snow on the ground well before that. And then um, most of our snow actually comes in January and sometimes in February. It's not unusual to have um, anywhere from like four to eight inches of snow in a storm and to have that happen a couple of times a year. You know, it varies a lot from year to year, but there is there is always snow on the ground from the end of December, and sometimes it doesn't all melt <laughs> until like mid-March. You know, in the shadows, where the sun doesn't hit it, sometimes just linger. We even get weird freak storms here. We. Um, we laugh about it, but I, I think probably like one out of every five years, one out of every five years we'll get a blizzard 
in uh, in April, early April. But Shepard drew it. <laughs> okay. Um, Yeah, I was just thinking that same thing. A nice, wholesome high elf shepherd that a high elf would, you know, deign to be a shepherd farmer kind of person is. That's it. That's a really interesting, cool combination. Oh, yeah, up on the northeast coast. Things can be really variable there. Um, Usually in New York, it doesn't get that much snow, but when it does snow, it just gets really heavy. Massachusetts sometimes can be extremely snowy, though. <coughs> maybe maybe you were lucky and didn't get caught in one of their famous blizzards. You know, every couple of years, they get like two feet of snow and everything gets shut down for days. So you ended up, Enforcer, you ended up playing, uh, yeah. That's one of the reasons why people go to the Southeast is to, uh, not for the summers, because those can be pretty brutal, but the winters are a little bit shorter. Okay, well, that combination of... Uh, What filing means that it seems to fit okay. <clears throat> so one thing I'm not sure about, this is sort of a thing on the submarine, is that there's this lever here, right? That's the lever that uh, pulls the spring down that's supposed to launch the missile thing. Um, the instructions show that the lever is positioned to the front, which makes sense because if you want to play with it, you're going to be able to want to reach it, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. You got to experience minus 10 Fahrenheit. That, uh, that's not something you want to do every day. That's for sure. But once you get a little bit further north, then there's snow on the ground and sometimes it's not quite as cold. So I can either do it this way, but the problem is aesthetically that I don't know if you can see these, but these, uh, these like tubes that run along the side of the tubes, when these are installed correctly, into the base, okay, the, uh, the, that vertical feature there sits on the front. Yeah, well, it would make a difference if the tabs lined up. Okay, so you can see that that vertical feature thing sits in the front, but if you want the same thing to happen with this, <laughs> with this one, then it would go in this way, okay? And the missile launching lever would be on the side here, which is still sort of accessible, um, but not really because this deck here comes down, it sits there, okay? So in order to make this work, this tube the lever has to uh, be here on the front, and this tube is oriented 90 degrees from all the other tubes. So I don't know. There's the aesthetic part that says do it this way. It maybe it's possible to reach in. I mean, it kind of is. It's kind of possible to reach in for the lever there, <coughs> and then you don't have. The ugliness of that lever showing. Okay. Uh, or I could orient it this way. I don't have to decide that until the whole thing is actually put together at the end. Um, but that's that's one of just a you know an aesthetic feature of this that I have to some 
either ignore it or something. And then I need I need to get some sort of non non plastic melting. Oh, oh, Brogger, thank you for so much for joining in. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll see you on Friday or uh, next week. Thanks, old Brogger. So, yeah, I need to put some sort of non-plastic melting lubricant on this thing so that it will go up and down without binding. Especially down here on the bottom. No, what I'm thinking is that since I really don't want to be playing with this missile launching feature particularly, I said I'm going to install it this way. And just very rarely, if ever, uh, try to launch a missile with it. Okay, so now I've got these two. Here is this one. Yeah, this one's okay. <clears throat> Injury for a high elf. Well, um, is your high elf an archer or um, like a long swords carrier? I'm thinking, though, if you have a war injury, that I know she's a shepherd druid now, but um, you, I thought you said, ah, okay. I was thinking maybe a, an arm injury would be better than a leg injury because of just the impact on mobility. Um, but maybe, maybe not. Okay, this is weird. So this one is going, this is going through here, okay. I'm just gonna do a little modifications up here at the top and see how that goes. <coughs> So, tell me a little bit more about the backstory about your druid. Particularly, how did your druid get to be a nice person? Sorry, I have some water back here that I need to grab. I didn't put it on my work surface because I tend to knock things over. This one just sort of flares up a little bit at the top. So as I've done with a couple of others, I'm just going to sand it down here at the top so that it fits through some of the holes pretty well, but not all of them. I need to take a lot off. Um, I'm using the coarse sandpaper to do that. And then I need to polish it because this leaves, uh, leaves marks on the plastic. But it makes it, you know, it can make a pretty big difference in terms of 
whether it goes through these holes easily or not. <clears throat> I might have to do it with the other one also. The downside, like I said, though, is that it requires, it leaves these scratches, and so it requires a fair amount of polishing afterwards. Which is boring to watch. <clears throat> Can't even see it here. I'll try to keep I'm trying to keep things on camera. I'm going to be finishing up the uh, missile tube in preparation <clears throat> just before break. <clears throat> and then after break, hi, Mind Eye. Thanks for joining chat. Um, yeah, you're getting your just near break. So I'll explain a little bit what I'm doing. Ah, friends. Cool. You guys play together? Uh, play D&D &D together? Well, I'm working on this submarine model. Um, oh, I'm going to take the time before the break as I'm finishing this up to explain that Dyson Dungeons is actually a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. <clears throat> we run our campaign. Ah, okay. So you join each other that way. Um, yeah, our Dungeons and Dragons campaign appears on Twitch three Sundays a month at two o'clock with a live chat. And then they are like redone. You can see them later uh, on YouTube, and you they also go, show up as a podcast. And it works for us because we're chatting a lot. There's not too much dead time. Um, so Dyson Dungeons started out as that and continues as a D&D &D campaign. Relaxing Painting with Dyson Dungeons started out <clears throat> because we print our own dungeon tiles. And I will show some to you in just a bit. Um, in fact, maybe I'll take a little break because, yeah, this one's this one's a little tight also. Um, yeah, there's 3D printers behind us, and we print these dungeon tiles. Here's some rough stone ones. I like to show these off. Okay, um, we print these. Our dungeon master has done a lot of design work on them, so they're one solid piece of wall and floor. And the cool part about it is that under this little plastic cap are ball magnets. And so in the corner of each dungeon tile is ball, are ball magnets, and so they stick to each other. And so you don't have to have like a metal surface or something for the magnets to work. They work on each other, and that just makes assembly and reassembly and disassembly and rearrangement incredibly easy and so relaxing painting started because these are printed right and we wanted to paint them for the show and uh, decided that what we would do is stream the painting so it's kind of secondary relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons is secondary to the D&D &D campaign yeah, isn't this really cool? I will get, I, I'll just say this. We have talked about making these commercially available because, um, you know, maybe, maybe painted, maybe not painted, uh, but it just, it's just amazing. And, uh, this is just one, the, these are the, uh, the rough stone. We also have cut stone you know you can see the difference there okay not just in color but also the texture and a lot of our sets have special features like this fire sigil which is actually part of the the print itself uh, the 3d printing and then we we paint it to show that way but my favorites are 
new favorites. These take a while to paint. Because there's multi-steps is the wooden ones. So they're they're printed and they've got like wood grain, really decent wood grain on it, and uh, stucco walls. So painting these is a little bit um, time consuming because you have to put a brown base coat on and then uh, paint the stucco and then put a wash over the brown base coat, which gives it its rich wood tone. Uh, but they all work the same way, okay? And also another feature of our sets is that they have doors that work. They're all pin hinged. You know, that's all hand painted as well. So this is the kind of, this is how relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons started, was um, streaming this, streaming the painting of these dungeon tiles that we then end up using in our D&D campaign. So I like to show these off because they're really, really cool. Um, <laughs> fog of War. Um, we haven't created Fog yet. No. <laughs> we have uh, we have created sewers, though. We have lots of sewers, and there's a miasma in the sewer. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, yeah, these dungeon tiles are really neat. So thank you for that. Um, keep an eye out. Maybe someday we'll... Maybe someday we'll print some up and let people, you know, have access to them. So for some reason, this is the front and that's the back. Um, the holes in the front, or at least some of them, are a little larger than the holes in the back. Like, okay, so this one will go through here, right? I mean, you would, you would think on a model like this that there would be some consistency and uniformity, but no, there just isn't. And so um, I'm going to modify this one a little bit so that it goes through the holes a little better. Um, but when I assemble it, I might be, I'd have to just very carefully select where this particular tube goes because it, um, anyway, yeah, this model's been like that. For those of you who have been watching Submarine Wednesday, you've noted that the 1960s vintage these are model kits that were actually produced way back in the mid 60s, early to mid 60s. Um, they were just not produced very well. Sometimes the detail is incredible, it's so that it was nicely designed, but sometimes, oh, I mean, you can see the detail like on here, where I was able to paint like the control panel with the dials and the buttons and stuff. Okay, or the fire extinguishers, that kind of thing. What's up with this? Why, why does that look scarred? I don't know. I'll have to touch that up. Um, yeah, so this thing was produced in the 60s, and the, the production quality just leaves a lot to be desired. I'll just leave it at that. Um, so I've been spending a lot of time on this model, just getting parts to fit. Not just, you know, not just painting the detail like this, okay, on the machinery and whatever, but <clears throat> getting, getting pieces to go together, like missile tubes that fit through the holes designed for the missile tubes. I think actually <laughs> sanding it. Um, no, it's got to be better. So it's probably worth me worth taking some time to get this, even though I have to do a lot of polishing on it now after this is done, um, so that I can put it in more than one location on the. Uh, In the submarine when I install it later. This isn't that bad. The, uh, there were some some tubes. I've been working with three different kits to get enough parts for one submarine. Okay. 
there were the parts from one kit that didn't fit at all. It was like, how could that possibly be? Okay, let me clean this off and see if it's fitting better now. This is the last of the 16. If I can get this one to work, then I can take a break. Okay, I'm still going to have to uh, be careful about where I put it, but less so than before. So now I need to, since I've scarred this all up with the coarse sandpapers, I need to do a lot of uh, polishing here. So this will take a few minutes. Um, all right. So I'm working on this missile deck. I'm getting these parts to fit. Once these tubes fit, I'll now be able to prime them. Priming them will be pretty easy once I get the stand made. There's 16 of these tubes. The stand's going to be a 2x4 with some dowels in it, so I can just set these in like that. Okay, so that they're standing up so I can spray paint them. So that's going to be another step, but um, I can't do that now because I don't have a stand constructed and so on. And then this one will be a little bit of a challenge because I need to very carefully mask all around where the um, spring-loaded bit is here that's supposed to launch a missile. So I'll need to fill that in with something and mask, mask the lever and... Uh, Anyway, yeah, I'll just need to be really careful with it so that I don't gum up that thing with spray paint. And, you know, I might have to do some touching up with some hand... some hand painting later, too. So after break, um, <laughs> I'm actually going to be doing some painting and some part hunting. Um... I'm going to be, I'll be pulling the hull of the submarine out so people, you know, if you can come back after break, you'll actually see that this, there is a submarine and that there are parts that have already been put into it about, probably a third of it is, is done, especially the highly detailed parts of it. It's pretty cool. <coughs> so I'm going to be uh, finishing the painting of the inside of the hull. Okay, not finishing it, but getting a lot of it done. And the, and, and you'll see why I'm painting the inside of the hull so that it matches the rest of all of these pieces that go into it. <clears throat> but you'll see that after I get back from break. So, it's coming. Too bad. It's polishing up pretty well. <coughs> Excuse me. The air got really dry when it got cold. Okay, well this is going to fit through at least some of the holes some of them some of them are a little tight so when I assemble this um, some of these will just have to go when I mean it'll just I'll just have to be careful where they go I don't want to keep I don't want to keep sanding this down necessarily although you know, the better part of valor Handing it down so that it fits more universally as opposed to rubbing off the yellow paint later. Uh, I'm getting impatient because this is this has just been going on for so long. I think little things like this. Well, yeah, we'll just deal with that later. 
One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'll show you what I'm doing. <clears throat> Those are all the missile tubes up there. That I have been prepping by sanding and filing down the seams um, so that they're not so visible. You know, it doesn't mar the appearance of the submarine so much. Um, these are some bulkheads that are going to be going into the submarine. <laughs> This one will be going in next, and then I might install this piece as well. And that goes between that and this, right there. If those go into the hull, and I might, like I said, I might just do those next. I'm definitely putting this one in, though. Um, but this, this is where the reactor goes. Okay, have fun at your meeting, and yeah, if you can, check back, because I'm going to be taking a break. I'll be back probably around like 12.30 or so, and um, I'll be pulling out the hull of the submarine, and it might be kind of fun to, you know, for you to see that. Um, as I uh, work at, at painting the inside of the hull to match the color of the bulkheads, okay? And um, we'll see how that goes. And then I need to decide, yeah, I need to fix this. Just the paint just is wrong. Yeah, just a little junk, and I need to do the ladder. So I'll be doing I'll be doing some hull painting. And um, ladder detailing. And and depending on how that goes in terms of time, I might start looking for the pieces that go into the reactor, okay, which is the next section of the submarine. So thanks for joining in so far. Uh, really appreciate it. And um, what in the heck is going on with this? This is one that doesn't fit at all. Okay. So I'm gonna, I need to make this one go away. There. <coughs> Three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, yay, plus the missile launcher. Okay. Yep. So I'm gonna be doing some painting, big brush, big chunks of the inside of the submarine. Part of it this color, part of it this color, part of it this dark gray. <laughs> and um, and then, like I said, depending on the time and how things are going, I might start looking, rooting through boxes, boxes or parts, to find these parts, these parts here, which is another bulkhead and a couple of decks and uh, the reactor. So, I'm uh, going to take a break now, and we'll be back in about half an hour. See you then. Okay, here we go. Um, back from break, eh, not too bad, like four minutes late or something, which is better than usual. And I'm going to do something that I keep forgetting to do, which is one of the very detailed parts of the uh, submarine model. So if you can see it on this bulkhead, there is a ladder. Okay, that's kind of embossed into the print. And what I am going to do is take this micron, very, very fine point, I'll tip pen and uh, make, it, uh, make it black. And I've done that before with some success. Hopefully I'll be able to do it again without making a mess of things. Need to be a little careful because um, the ink tends to dissolve in the paint, 
Okay, so if I mess this up, then um, then I've got a mess. So far, this looks really good. Okay, this particular bulkhead piece looks pretty decent. Um, so let's see if I can keep it that way. I am now wearing these head magnifiers. This is a two time, two X uh, magnifying thing here. And I need that in order to be able to see what I'm doing. to be pretty focused to do this. That's why I'm doing this is because I'm yeah. Keep his left in a steady hand. You can see it now. You can see that it's, I don't know, as much as it's on camera here. Uh, yeah, with the side reels of the ladder. This is the easy part because it's raised higher. So the ladder are a little more challenging because they're not raised very high. that'll look and it's it's not too bad so I'm going to um, I'm almost tempted to not bother and I think I'm just you know going to do my best to just do a little bit of Thinking on bones. So if you look at it, um, you know, that's basically what I did was I highlighted the uh, components of the ladder so that, you know, it's not perfect, but when you're looking at it, you can see, see much more that it's a ladder than if it were just left green. So that's all there is to that. So that's out of the way and I didn't hurt anything. <laughs> Yay. I'm going to put this away. Now on this particular piece, if you look at it, there's for some reason just a flaw in this paint color. And I hate to, you know, just mess around with it like that, but it just, it needs to be fixed. 
and it's just like a tiny dots, tiny dots of paint, right? Um, <laughs> and it hardly seems worth mixing up a bottle of paint and getting a brush out and everything to touch it up, but it's it's very much clearly a flaw. Hi, who? Yeah, nice to join in after break, huh? No, I didn't do a flip because nobody was on that asked for a flip, so no one got a flip. <clears throat> but as soon as I, as soon as I do tiny touch up on this, tiny little bits of touch up, um, I will do a flip, and then I'm going to be pulling out the hull of the submarine and doing a little bit of, um, actually quite a lot of painting of the inside of the hull. that dry and look good when it's done that was it that was the relaxing painting part of the relaxing painting show no not really but well be No, we were gone forever, was it? Didn't it feel like that? I think we were gone for... I don't know. I really have no idea in terms of time. It was like two and a half weeks? Something like that? No, I'm not behind this camera. Yeah, quite a while. But back now. And I am planning to do this stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, at least at least on up until like the 20s, 20s of the December when calendars and family stuff and whatever starts getting a little bit more active. Um, yeah, I had a fairly productive morning in that, uh, you, I mean, it's not anything that you can see terribly much, but I did get... I did get 15 regular and one special missile tube to um, be ready for priming. Yep, get those primed. They, all but one of them, fits through these holes pretty nicely, and all but one of them nestle in the bottom of this pretty well, so hopefully I'll be able to get them to work. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of running out of room here. Now that I put all these pieces in here. And so what you're going to be seeing after the big flips is I'm going to bring the hull of the submarine out so people will be able to see that there really is a submarine. Um, and I'm going to paint, be painting the inside of the hull. <clears throat> I did some of that the last time I worked on this a long time ago. Uh, but uh, it's not it was just the light blue color I have to I haven't checked to see if it needs a second coat or not I do know it needs a touch up because I managed to stick my finger in a piece of it okay to sear or not to sear that is the question yeah, let me move this up so we can see what's going on not to sear sear two sears Two and two. Three and two. <laughs> three and three. It turned out 50-50. Uh, that was pretty good. So we got the flip in. I know. It's hard to keep the schedule going. Um, well, I got made quite a mess here. <laughs> so let me... Um, I'm going to need... 
this deck. No, I'm just going to keep these pieces here. I'm going to be doing one of my favorite things. One of my favorite things is to um, just wander off camera. Just wander off camera during the stream. Time to get some new cardboard. This is this super expensive high-tech paint mat cardboard is uh, starting to warp. Um, yeah, I'm wandering off screen and uh, getting the submarine hull. Back! Here I am! Uh, this is always one of, a, you know, favorite, one of my favorite parts, is actually showing you that there is a submarine. Okay. And in fact, the first chunk of it is completed in amazing detail. You know, just like, almost like professionally built. Except it's not, for two reasons. One is, I'm not a I'm not getting paid, so that part is definitely not professional. Uh, the other part is I'm not really that good at it. Um, but I think it's come out, I think it's coming out pretty well, you know? I mean, there's details like the, the toilets in the head there, and a lot of detail on the control panels and the pots and pans and stuff back in the galley there, you know? It, it looks pretty decent. Um, this is the part I painted last time, and actually, except for where I stuck my finger, right there, it looks pretty decent. Um, so what I'm going to work on now is this, this bit goes in here. It's, if it fits in correctly, it's always a matter of rotating, getting it in, the, not just in the slot, but rotating it so that the little notch lines up with the little tab there we go um yeah the the things that needs to be done in this section here other than touching that up which definitely needs touching is um this bottom deck this bottom deck goes in here like this Oh, it does. I test fit this once before. Yeah, stick your finger on stuff and make sure you break it. Yeah, I do need to touch that up a little bit there. Is that underneath here? Okay, that part under there needs to be painted uh, the dark gray color, which is the, the color of, uh, like, the ballast tank here. Okay. And up at the top, where there's something similar going on, okay, Oops, this deck goes in. The missile tubes go between these decks, and there's a third one in between there. You know. Okay. what I'm doing with my glasses on. I know, that doesn't make sense, but it, it does if you are aware of what trifocals are like. Okay. So that part up there needs to be painted dark gray, and that part down here needs to be painted dark gray. So, um... You know, it's just, it's deciding, like, where is the line? I am tempted. I'm tempted to paint this with the deck in place. I sincerely am tempted. This deck on the bottom. It rests on these kind of baffles here. So I know that if I paint, if I take this out, if I paint up to the top of those baffles, um, it should be okay. 
this up here though I don't want to I don't want it to go too far down because I don't want to have to repaint it blue later what I really need is a very sharp pencil right if I had a very sharp pencil I can run it along the top of the deck there and give myself a line to which I will paint to to which I will paint okay but the first thing I mean just just to make sure it's done because I'll forget about it is where I stuck my finger before and I've got that flaw that needs to be fixed The other thing that I can, I can actually show you how this works is that this, these two pieces go together here into this slot. <clears throat> this is where the reactor goes. Okay. That's important to know. This is the, this is the radioactive part. You don't want to go in here. So that it's important to not go into this space. It does help if the parts fit, and this one's not not fitting quite right. There we go. That fits together, but this doesn't. There's, there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of not quite going together here, but this this area here um, is apparently all painted this dark gray as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Basically, this whole inside area here is painted dark gray. And then some of these bits, uh, there's like some dials and things, that, and uh, a piece of equipment and some warning lights and things. I have to decide. I'll have to decide whether those are going to show or not. And if they are, then I will uh, paint the detail on them. First, I need a little dab of this color. Uh, that I managed to mess up by, um, yeah, by sticking my finger on it. There's a jar cap that needs to be cleaned sooner than later. <clears throat> the threads on the jar are getting gummed up. So I don't need this part. And I will be removing this and this in just a minute so that I can do the dark gray painting. But first I need to um, draw a line on the hull. Back in. All these pieces fit really tightly. And just because of the way they're molded. When, when this is actually assembled, None of these pieces are glued in, except up here. A few of these are glued in almost, and none of these are glued in. They're just held, held by friction. I 
Why is that part not painted? Okay, I am baffled by something here. Okay, yeah, there's another part I need to paint this light blue color. It looks like I missed it. I'm not sure how or why. <coughs> it looks like there's kind of a piece of bulkhead there, and you're not supposed to be able to see behind it, but you can't. So I'm not sure what that what the deal is there. But as I said, what I really need is a very sharp pencil. I will see if I can find one. All right. <clears throat> the pencil. So here, everything above this deck in the hall, here in the hall area, is to be painted this dark gray color. All right. So I need to know where that line is. And so I'm just going to use this deck as the guide and draw this line. Ta -da. And that line tells me that I need to paint down to that line and ever so slightly beyond it. Now, let's assemble this. The line remains. Put this back in the box. Yeah, here's the part here. I never, I never painted that. I don't understand why not. It makes no sense that I hadn't. Um, Well, this paint is starting to get near the bottom of the bottle. Fortunately, I am almost done with it. Because, um... It's going to be almost unusable. I don't think I have... Other than this compartment, this is the last one that's done in this color. Okay, I'm going to get this out of the way so I don't mess it up. <coughs> and here's the dark gray. Painting <clears throat> down under here, up to and inside of these little... I'm going to call them ballast compartments, basically. And then on the top, up to and very slightly over uh, this pencil line. And then here, this entire compartment is painted that dark gray as well. So as I have it out, I will do that. Um, it looks like there's, there's some little pieces of equipment here that would be good to paint... And I think I'll do that. That would be good to paint the, um... The color of uh, the rest of the equipment. Just little bits of it. And now I'm seeing tiny spots that need this color that I just put away that I said I'm done with it. You know, I'm seeing flaws. Never look closely at things, because when one looks closely, one sees flaws. Invisible. Make any difference to anybody. 
This is why building the submarine, one of the reasons why this is taking forever, is that I see little bits like this and then decide to uh, do something about them. Okay? And uh, then it ends up taking like the better part of 15 minutes to do something that no one will ever notice. But you're out. And I'm sure that there are other flaws that yeah, will become visible at some point and they'll have to decide what they're to do something about. This color a little later. That little piece of machinery right there. I just I decided I'm going to paint it when the time comes. Okay, this paint needs a fairly large amount of mixing because it's been a while since I used it. Um, yeah, I haven't rambled on about anything in particular today because we had some people up in chat and we were chatting. Old Brogger came on. That was wonderful. And then uh, <clears throat> Mind I joined chat for the first time. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, so those things uh, happened and uh, it's just as well because I don't have that much really to talk about today. I didn't like rehearse any any interesting kinds of things to talk about at all. Okay, so the idea here is to get this dark gray on where I want it, and not so much where I don't. Right? So that's going to be the attempt. And so I'm going to start at the top here, and I'm painting down to that pencil line right along here. If I got it right, that would be good. If I didn't, then when I, I'll be, be test fitting again the decks, okay, and the bulkheads and the decks. And if I need to, I can, uh, you know, just spread more paint, I guess.
that are in here. I want the bulkhead to match the uh, hull. little spots like the insides of these bits. Well, if it's in the right place, it should look okay. So hopefully the line that was drawn works. Let me get the bottom. This is, there's a little more surface area to work with here. I'm going to go up to And inside of these, I'm going to paint the tops of them too, just in case they show. But the deck above rests on top of these things. Yeah. Oh man, right. Catch the bottle with the back of the brush. That would have been that would have been pretty exciting to knock that over. I get the sides of these. These, I'm guessing, are like ballast tanks or something. It's just the impression that they're giving. And um, Get the corners because those will end up showing. You're actually getting some painting here and relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons with the submarine model that had not always been happening. Frequently been getting an awful lot of uh, filing and sanding and um, complaining, especially complaining about the quality of the um, the molding. Deserves a lot of complaining. So they're kind of ragged edges, but that is not a problem because the decks will cross there and cover it up. And then it looks fine. Okay, now, as I said, this is where the reactor goes, and so this entire section back here is painted this dark gray. and into where this next bulkhead goes. 
and there's detail on there. There's some dials and things, and those will get painted over later. Dry nicely, and there won't be too many spots that were missed or anything. But yeah, these little dials and things, if they show, and I'll test that later, we'll see if, um, if they do, and then I'll paint those. Like, here's a little control panel. <clears throat> Let me cap this up and get it out of the way before I really, before things get really bad. <laughs> In the aft end here, these are machine rooms. Um, so like this control panel here will be detailed. Yeah, this piece of equipment will get a painting color as well as that. <clears throat> the rest of this is... Um, painted light green and since things are moving along get the dust out of here <clears throat> I am actually going to um, stick my finger in some of the wet paint maybe spread it around the painted areas or even worse yet painted areas But um, I think since I am doing painting, I might go ahead and paint the inside of this hall uh, the green color that it is going to be painted. And then, except for some of the detail, which I'll get to later, the inside of the hall will be done. So if this paint dries okay, up here, I don't want to mess with it when it's wet. You know, it's, I've just done that too many times with bad results. <laughs> so I'm going to test fit some of those things again um, to see if I need to modify the line of the different colors. But first, Yes, the gray the gray handles the radiation better. Um, I mean everybody knows that, right? Lead, lead is gray. Uh, stainless steel is shiny gray, but it's kind of gray. But I think the dark gray, the dark gray, because what happens is the radiation hits it and it just kind of burns everything. So if you put any other color in there. It was just going to turn gray anyway. I don't know if any of that's true, but, you know. Why not? We'll make something up. There. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is totally unnecessary and so likely to be a bad idea. Uh, but there's a little piece of equipment here that uh, I'm going to paint the color of you know, machinery that color because somebody because it's molded in it's going to get painted that color I'm 
meaning. This, you know, the little pieces are a lot easier to handle. I'll just say that. They just really are. to paint only in one direction. I need to rotate this to get the other side of this, whatever it is that happens to be here thing. Now you can see that there is a little piece of machinery there. Why? I don't know, but there it is. It's in the machinery area. <laughs> so as a holiday gift, it looks like since I wear out these these little brushes, this particular kind of brush. I've used up two of them already, just worn them out completely. I'm not sure why. I guess either the bristles are brittle or I don't clean it right or whatever. Um, I've used up two of them. And I need, it's going to be a holiday gift request. It's buy a couple more. All right. Um, in order to continue on with relaxing painting and potentially except for some of the detail like some control panels and pieces of equipment and dials and things like that that will need some detail painting later um, I'm going to paint the stern the very back end here these are all the machine rooms there's two two compartments with two decks on each one and these, except for the very, very bottom, just like this, the very, very bottom, which will be painted later, are painted green, the same color as the uh, control room areas up here. So I'm going to uh, do that next. And after that's dried, the inside of the hull, like I said, except for the detail, will be com completely painted. The base coat at least will be in, will be done. And then I'll, I'll take a real close, ugh. Yeah. This brush holds a lot of paint. Yeah, it's hard, I want to make sure I get it all out before I use it for another color. Yeah, I'm not sure I'll do much more. If the rest of the paint looks like it's drying enough that I can, you know, play around with it without um, scratching it up too much or getting my finger in it and spreading it, I might fit, test fit these decks again just to make sure that the line is correct. But, you know, I'm, I'm just going to say no. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take a chance with wet paint but what i am going to do if there's time left in the stream um is i'm going to fish around for the parts for the next section of this of the assembly <coughs> the reactor room parts so that uh, potentially i can prep those and uh, prime them at the same time, I prime the missile tubes. 
but getting this hall painted uh, it just it seems like a worthwhile thing to do and this isn't too terribly taxing okay I mean just just have to get it all green This paint hasn't been used in a while. And I want to make sure it's well mixed. Y'all get to hear the buzzing of the Vortex spinner. It shakes up the green. I think, I'm trying to remember if this green needs two coats or not. I'm hoping it doesn't, but that's not something I can count on. Uh, let's see, I think I, I can, I'm going to rotate this around this way. Maybe I'll move the camera up higher so you can kind of see what I'm working on. <laughs> and I'm going to move myself down this way. Because this there's no room here up front for this for the hall. That's the thing that's holding up the camera. So, here, I'm just going to rotate this that way so you can see me turn this green. And once this is painted, I'm going to move this whole thing out of the way so that I don't, yeah, I just, I want to minimize the risk here. <coughs> so as you can see, there's some things here that are going to need detail painting later, but that will be later. This little ridge is what holds the bulkhead in. And that needs to be painted to match the color of the inside of the hull. Control panel will get painted over later. Cable runs get a little bit wonky. Some sort of tank here that get will get painted a different color. Every once in a while, I thought about getting out the fine tipped pen and painting and highlighting the cable runs, but then it was, no, just no way. No way I was going to do all of that. It would just be um, asking for serious complications and problems.
Okay, we'll do this last one. There's not much on the back end here. Chunk of something. There's a whole lot of that beige colored equipment though. Like there was on the, in the missile launch room, the missile tube room. I don't know if that'll need a second coat or not. It's hard to tell until the paint dries. It changes color pretty significantly as it dries. <clears throat> so it's just gonna look it's just gonna look kind of scabby until it does. This is just the way it is. But I just you know to the extent that I can make sure I haven't missed any spots. It's like there's Kind of a big paint buildup along the edges. Yeah, it's probably not a real problem. Um, okay, that being done, you can see this part of the submarine is finished nicely. This part of the submarine is where all the missile tubes go. That's going to be a little challenging. This part here is the reactor room, and then there's just a whole lot of machinery back here. Basically, it's brown floors um, with uh, beige equipment. So there'll be some things like some dials and buttons and things that'll require some detail, but for the most part, not too bad. Kind of looking forward to getting to here because everything else up to here has been just really kind of overwhelming and these missile tube areas should be straightforward but they haven't been i'm going to take this away now and put it someplace safe hopefully not drop it or knock it into anything on the way and then uh, cover it up so it doesn't get dusty and not deal with that again i'm going to do though besides getting this out of the way Let's get the box. Get this up again so you can see what I'm working with here. Get my color chart out of the way. <laughs> Cover up the stuff that I'm not working with. And what I'm going to do, hopefully I've got the right one. Hopefully this is the one from which I am taking the parts. It is not. This is not the one. This is one of the Donan pieces. Okay, on guard. Like I said, I have three of these, right? Well, that wasn't the one because that had uh, pieces in like the hull that I've already used. This is the one I'm hoping. Yep, because a lot of the pieces are already used up. This, by the way, is the side of the hull. <coughs> that uh here there big long thing that covers up goes on top of and is hinged actually to fold down the inside of the submarine that you saw just a little while ago what i am wanting to do now is i want to find the pieces these pieces here that go into the reactor area i'm going to start with the easy part, hopefully. 
which is finding the bulkhead. Mm, this might be it. Oh, that's not good. That's really crappy. I'm going to have to go through some of the other donor kits. This is this bulkhead here. You can see how that matches. But when you look on the other side, there are some lockers. Look at that. That's the kind of thing that happens okay when the mold doesn't get filled that is bad so I might have to find I'm going to look through the other two kits to see said before to see if there are pieces that are better than that um, otherwise I am looking for hmm those aren't them Some reactor pieces. Okay. This is, these are the two cutaway reactor pieces. There's this one here. That's this. Then that orientation. And then this is this. So I'm finding those. You can see again how badly molded they are. Like there's all this flashing around the edges and how the seam between you know this is injection molded so that the seam between the two parts um, yeah is really obvious I'm going to cut those off the tree and what I want to do is cut them back a ways so that a little tab of plastic actually stays on them so that I don't end up with like a divot, okay? I don't want to break a chunk of plastic off. Okay, there's... Mm -hmm. Not cooperating. So this is number 70. It's hard to hard to not see what this is. See me cutting off a piece of plastic here with an exacto knife that... Uh, there we go. Put that up there. Yeah, this is good timing. This is going to take me a while to get these parts. And then they just need a lot of sanding and scraping. I can just see right now that they're just really a mess. <clears throat> there we go. Um, like if you just look at this here, you can see the part. And then there's all of this excess plastic all around it. Okay, this one is pretty easy to identify. That's here. You can see the keyhole there and there. So that's that's that. I'm guessing this is this is number seventy-six. No, he's going further back. <clears throat> Fishing the parts here, digging around, trying to find them. That yeah, might be it. Yeah, several of the reactor parts are in here. In this little envelope of don't lose these parts parts. This is 76 because it has that number on it. So I've got that, that, that. Um, this is obviously the back of the reactor. This is number 74. Having found that is good. So I need 73 and 72. Oh, by the way, yeah, I talked about this. This is this is the little missile. Little missile that fits inside the missile tube with the spring. I might play with that at some point. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, 
Okay, this is a, this is an important part here. That's this. This is seventy-two. This is the thing that this this that's all it is that carries all of the power for the entire submarine. Apparently, according to this model, um, right there, those hot superheated water comes up from the reactor heat exchanger and goes into the engine room and this pipe carries is powers the everything powers everything in the sub now i need the 73 thing there it is this is like the, the cap the cap of the heat exchanger okay <clears throat> so i'm going to do a real quick review Get this box somewhat out of the way. You can see the parts here. Line them up a kind of like how they are. So there's the reactor core, there's the heat exchanger, there's the back of the heat exchanger, there's the top, there's the pipe that carries all of the power for the entire submarine, the upper deck, the mid deck, okay, there isn't apparently any lower deck, these things are just sort of suspended here somehow, um, we'll see how that goes. And then there is this bulkhead here, okay, which I have found, it's this one. But when you look at it, it has lockers on the back, and those are very badly molded. So I have two more kits, and I'm going to look at them and find this part, number eight, okay, and the other two kits to see if, in fact, it is better. And if not, then I just have to go with the least bad of them. And as I keep saying over and over and over again, these things are not molded very well, and that's why I bought one of the reasons why I have to buy three kits in order to make one. And this is my first hope. This is another George Washington. Okay. This box is nearly complete. Not all of the parts, not all of the parts here are parts of this particular model. All right. But it's uh, they're almost all here. So if anybody wants to try to do one of these at some point in the future, you could just buy this one. Okay, so this one. Okay, this is the offending part here. See how badly dimpled that is. This is the original. This is the kit I've been working with, and it's really badly dimpled. This one is also dimpled, but it is dimpled like about a third as much. So of these two parts, okay, the donor kit, this one, the uh, the second George Washington, the one on, from which I'm using just a few parts, okay, the other kit that I had showed you is the one from which 90% of the parts so far have come. Um, this one's better than the original kit, so this one gets the bad part, and I'm holding on to this, but not yet done, because there is yet a third kit. Third kit is a later model. <laughs> they changed it from the original uh, George Washington to the Ethan Allen, but almost all the parts are identical. I mean, they're almost all exactly the same as um, the the one I was working with. So this part, this submarine has actually 
contributed some parts. Here's the, oh my, okay. So this one, this one is even worse than the first one. Look at that. I mean, it's, those are lockers, right? So all you can say is that there must have been one heck of a fight, one huge battle in the machine room, and someone slammed into that locker really hard. So this is the best of the three. It's not perfect. It's still dented. Okay, so here instead of having a huge body slam into the locker, someone just smashed it with her with a tool or something or maybe something bumped into it but that's this is by far by far the best of the three that i have to work with so that's the one that happens and then this one thank you very much for trying but no nope, failure Yep, and so far I have used parts from all three models. Almost all of them from the original one, but some of them from the other two builders. Continue to be off camera, but I'm gonna box up the kit that I'm working with here. There it's all right. <clears throat> here I can get things back here so you can see how this goes. Um these are all the pieces for the reactor room, right? And this is the bulkhead that, um, this bulkhead actually is midway. I don't know if you noticed it when I was painting the green. This is, this one goes midway between the forward machine room and the afterward machine room, okay? Um, all of this stuff goes into the reactor area here in the middle. And then this just goes in in anticipation of the next chunk <coughs> of work. So this gets pretty much what happens here is the hatches get painted gray. That's the idiom. The fire extinguishers are red. The machinery is painted uh, beige. The walls, except for very bottom here, the ballast area, get painted uh, green to match the hull color. And then the same thing happens here. You know, fire extinguishers, there's a, I have a, a color that I've been using for lockers. Those are, those look like, I don't know if those are lockers or not. I'll have to decide what those really are. Um, they look kind of like lockers. And the machinery in the gray. What you can see here too is, and this is something that shows up on all of them, is that these, there's these circles, okay? Well, you know, the submarine bulkheads didn't come with circles. They just didn't. And again, these are molding flaws, and those are in places that are highly visible. So I've been spending a lot of time um, basically just filing them off and sanding them off. Just It's just really, it's just kind of a pain. Just like here, you know, um, it doesn't have a 76 on it, so I'll file that off. Yeah, there's a bunch of circles on the bottom of this too. So the prep work, <coughs> there's just a lot of prep work on this. Mainly it has to do with um, getting rid of, like this isn't too bad, there's just a circle. <laughs> A flat circle built into the pipe that I need to file down or sand down. There's a lot of flashing on here that just needs to be taken off. And then the seams need to be sanded down. But just a lot of molding issues, you know, that 
if it had been done a little more carefully, wouldn't be issues at all. But so it is. Um, <laughs> so I have a choice here. I can start standing and filing like, like I was before. Maybe I'll do that with one piece just to show what that's all about and why. This one's really a mess. Yeah, I mean, see these plastic flaps here? Like here and here? Those are not part of the piece. Those are just pieces of excess plastic. You can see because of the picture that they don't exist like that. So, um, yeah, just, uh, this is just going to be a lot of cleanup. And since this, those paper towels are covering up underneath there, I will probably, um, Put another layer of paper towels on to keep these from getting too terribly filthy. But, you know, there it is. Cover these up. <coughs> there. Go back to this. And let me let me do some recapping here. I'm gonna do a little bit of filing just you know just to do it while I'm chatting. So these circles here, these circles here are not um, parts. I mean, that's not part of the submarine. They're just mold issues. And so what I've been able to do is use a file and pretty much just scrape them off. Okay, until the color is uniform. And then, oh, use um, the, the fine 1600 grit um, emery cloth to uh, just smooth it out. The ones that are raised like this, <laughs> these were raised. This is a divot, nice. Those are easier to take care of than the ones that are uh, <clears throat> indented. These can just be scraped off the ones that are <clears throat> indentations, and there have been some. Those need to be filled in and sanded. And the filler, you know, it's okay, but it's not great. And so they still kind of show. Anyway, this is the kind of thing that I've been doing that is probably, you know, definitely not what I did when I did built this as a kid. I probably didn't even notice that those things were there, much less care about them. Uh, but they really annoy me now. I'm just using this to polish after whacking at it with a file. <clears throat> so, um, relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons is back. I will return on Friday at more or less 10 and continue until more or less 2 and hopefully the next few weeks as well I don't know what I'll be working on on Friday I'll have to look at the minifigs that we've got piled up I know a bunch of them just got printed on the rosin printer uh, a while ago so we'll need to be doing some uh, priming and I will likely be t you know I might even try, if I've got some time, 
to build a little stand for the priming of the uh, to hold up the the missile tube so that I can prime those also. It would be kind of nice to do that. Here. So, please, uh, if at all possible, check out our Dungeons and Dragons campaign, Dice M Dungeons which streams on Twitch with a live chat three Sundays a month. <clears throat> and you can catch all sorts of back episodes, there are many of them now, on YouTube or um, as a podcast. And that is what Dice and Dungeons is primarily about, is the D&D campaign. Relaxing Painting came about as uh, just a spinoff, as we decided to stream the preparation, the painting, and detailing of our dungeon tiles and minifigures and things like that that we use on our show, on our stream. Um, Submarine Wednesday. Uh, I was born by accident when there wasn't anything else to do. And so I pulled out this old model that I had laying around, the three models, actually. <clears throat> and started recreating the submarine that I built when it first came out in the 1960s. And as you could see, when I showed you the rest of the submarine, the hull before, there's actually been some progress. It's coming along. It's coming along, and when I get these missiles done, <coughs> we will actually be able to start seeing that it might come to an end. Okay. So there I prepped one of the parts that needs that needed some work. So that it's not so wonky anymore. And I put it back with the other parts. These are the parts that go to the reactor room. A couple of decks that hold it together. The cutaway interior of the reactor itself. I'm gonna try to paint that so it looks like fierce. You, you know, uranium uh, fissioning and creating a white hot kind of heat, and then the cutaway of the uh, coils where the reactor water, the high pressure reactor water, goes through the heat exchanger and heats uh, the superheated water that goes through this. There's this little pipe, sorry about that, um, and this pipe then powers the entire submarine. I think that's hilarious. <clears throat> and you get to saw, you get to, you got to see me uh, rifle through a couple of boxes to try to find the least bad um, bulkhead. There was that too. These pieces all need to be uh, prepped in a significant way before they can be primed. So I'll be focusing primarily back on the missile room. I would really, really like to have that finished. I'd really like to be done with the missile room. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. So, thanks everybody who had watched today. Thanks to everybody who might be joining uh, when this rebroadcasts re on YouTube. Um be back again on Friday, more or less at 10 o'clock, and we'll be working on something. If there are no minifigs, I'll come back to the submarine. That would be, you know, something I haven't done yet, but we'll see. Um, yeah, continuing to work on this beast. Hopefully, hopefully soon. Hopefully soon it will be done. <clears throat> Thanks again. Uh, please feel free to become a follower, a sponsor, uh, and if you really like Dice and Dungeons, please go to patreon.com slash dice and dungeons and become a patron. Yeah, now I've just got a whole lot of cleaning up to do. I really spread things out and made a mess today. Thanks again. See you soon.